Good morning and welcome to Home Retreats. My name is Father Chad. Um, just before we start, a thanks first of all to Father Kevin for overcoming a slight technical hitch just before this with great calmness. Um, and secondly, to let you know that next week, because of our own retreat, there will be no home retreat. So that's on the 14th. Let's begin this morning with a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Father, give us humility that we may receive, faith that we may understand, and love that we may embrace whatever you teach us today, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I wonder, does dancing make you happy or make you squirm? Dancing can be divisive. Some find it embarrassing disturbing. At university I knew a Baptist from Texas where he told me they disapproved of sex standing up in case it led to dancing. Where there are dances, wrote St Ephraim, the angels are sad and the devils jubilant. St Ambrose called them sepulchres of purity. Look at Herod's reaction to Salome dancing to see what it can provoke or the Israelites dancing round the golden calf to see what it can express. Many see dancing as primitive, even bestial, something beyond which we thankfully have progressed. Sharing Cicero's view, no gentleman dances unless he's mad or drunk. And yet, dancing is central to most cultures, even our own culture. Across the world there have been war dances, fertility dances, harvest dances, display and courtship dances. Those of you who watch BBC Strictly know how powerful an experience dance can be for individuals. Amidst all the self-conscious awkwardness, amidst all the sexualized exhibitionism, there are moments, rare moments, when you see the contestants relax as they dance light up, as their dancing expresses a harmony that transcends their usual inner divisions. In the film Billy Elliot, at the end of an uncomfortable audition for ballet school, the young Billy is asked, finally, how he feels when he dances. He stammers out, I feel a change in my whole body, like there's fire in my body, like electricity, and I'm just there, flying like a bird. The scriptural account of King David dancing conveys all the ambiguities of dancing. As the ark is brought into Jerusalem, he leaps before the Lord with all his might. The daughter of Saul watching through a window despises him for his shamelessness. What will the maids think, she says. David transcends any concern for his own dignity. I will make myself contemptible. His dancing leads to blessings for the people. Her bitterness leads only to sterility. In the Gospels, Jesus rebukes his listeners. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. Jesus played the music of the gospel on the instrument of the human life. A gospel that, according to the Protestant reformer Tyndale, should make us sing and dance and leap for joy. How do you physically express your faith? There are those who see prayer as purely spiritual. We need to ignore, bypass, even escape our bodies. I'm left wondering, well, why then did God give us bodies? In the Hindu story of creation, Shiva sends pulsating waves of sound through previously inert matter so that it dances. Perhaps by contrast, we are relieved with the sobriety of the Genesis account. God said, and so it was. We feel safer in the world of words. But the creativity of God is not safe, sober, dry, 
controlled. In the series Testament, there is a wonderful animated interpretation of creation, depicting creatures bursting out, spiralling forth, leaping, jumping, dancing as they are created. Now many prefer to remain cerebral. I just want to think heavenly thoughts and so see dancing as dangerous, taking me beyond my immediate control. It is striking that when the lame man in the Acts of the Apostles, waiting by the beautiful gate, is healed by Peter, he then enters the temple leaping and praising God. Often we think we are creatures learning how to be spirits, when really we are spirits learning how to be creatures. That's why Strictly is so fascinating. Yes, it has the absorbing gossip of a soap opera, the sweaty competitiveness of any contest, but the real journey for the participants is learning how to express themselves through their bodies, within a particular discipline, with its own structure. They recognise there is a tradition here bigger than any one individual. It is not just free expression, there is something to learn to be formed in, a way of channeling their spirits. C.S. Lewis recognised this in comparing liturgy to dancing. He wrote, a service works best when through long familiarity we don't have to think about it. As long as you notice and have to count the steps, you are not yet dancing, but only learning to dance. I'd like to extend this seeing not just our liturgy, but our life as a dance. Now for many, dancing is something at best only for peak moments, special celebrations, weddings, birthdays. Ecclesiastes recognises there is a time to mourn and a time to dance. The psalmist exults, you have changed my mourning into dancing. And Jeremiah looks forward to the restoration of Israel after their exile. Again I will build you. Again you shall go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Mourning and dancing would seem to be separate. But what if dancing were more than an outburst of joy, but something that takes us through both joy and sorrow to the glory beyond? Leonard Cohen's haunting song, Dance Me to the End of Love, was inspired by accounts of Jewish musicians press-ganged into playing in the death camps of the Holocaust as people were led to their death. Dance me to your beauty with a burning violin. Dance me through the panic till I'm safely gathered in. Dance me to the end of love. Long distance walkers are advised to keep the same rhythm to their walking, lengthening their stride downhill, shortening their stride uphill, but maintaining the same tempo. Dancing likewise involves discerning the rhythm and then expressing that in your physical response, which will vary. I remember many years ago, my granny thanking me for our dance at a family wedding that was very meditative, she said, like two tethered elephants gently rocking together. In the Australian film Strictly Borum, the hero is mocked by the Spanish grandmother of his new dance partner when he tries to show them his paso doble. You know the moves, but not the rhythm, she says, as with her hands she beats out the steps on his heart. What rhythm do you discern? I saw a film on the African church called The Dancing Church. The narrator, a European priest, concluded that in Africa, to dance is to breathe, to be alive, to be in touch with the rhythm of the universe, expressed through the feet going down, connecting with the earth. This can be seen in a totally different setting in Somerset, when the writer Laurie Lee died, 
and his wife and daughter went into their garden to pick his favourite rose petals to cover his body. When suddenly we had this extraordinary sensation rushing up through our feet and we had to dance. I suppose I am speaking of a quality of life, an inner sense of rhythm, which is then expressed in dancing your way through life, a holy dance. A humble Anglican bishop I knew wrote a poem on the melody of the angels. You have heard it in the rhythms of the hills, the spiralling turn of a dance, the fall of words, the touch of fingers at the rare right moment. And these were holy, holy. Botticelli has his angels dancing their joy above the scene of the nativity. St Basil wrote, Christ is born on earth and we dance with the angels for joy. It is not I make up my rhythm, not I choose to dance, but I hear, I pick up that rhythm, I have to dance. Faith is not imposing a meaning on life, but a response in recognition of the meaning that is already there. T.S. Eliot wrote, at the still point of the turning world, there the dance is. The word became flesh, we believe. Well, in Christ, the rhythm became dance. The rhythm became dance. That inner life of God the Trinity became visible. Now we struggle to convey how God is not static but dynamic, how God is life, not just presence. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life. What if he had said, I am the way, the truth and the dance? Salvation is joining in that central dance. Fra Angelica's last judgment portrays the angels dancing the saved through a beautiful garden into a shining city. Now, of course, our experience is often very different. In Alice in Wonderland, when the mock turtle sings to the snail, will you, won't you, will you, won't you, won't you join the dance? The snail cautiously declines fearing this invitation into the English Channel that will carry him towards French consumers. Why should we join the dance? There are many reasons not to join the dance. Thomas Merton at the end of his Seeds of Contemplation wrote, No despair of ours can alter the reality of things or stain the joy of the cosmic dance that is always there we are invited to cast our awful solemnity to the winds and join in the general dance. Entering the kingdom in this way requires a lightness of foot. We get so bogged down, so heavy. There is the right sort of playfulness to this dance. We get a sense of this in Proverbs' description of the role of wisdom in God's creativity. I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, and delighting in the human race. Those of you of a certain age may remember the gymnast Olga Corbett at the 1972 Olympics. Looking back on her gold-winning floor routine, she remembered, I just felt I was like a seven-year-old girl just dancing on the grass outside. Now there is a playfulness which is frothy and superficial, but there is also a seriousness that is dull and self-important. At its best, dance is both playful and serious. There is a depth and a cost to this, recognised by George Herbert. He that lives in hope dances without music. Let us then finish with one of Herbert's prayers. 
Thou that has given so much to me, give one thing more, a grateful heart. Not thankful when it pleaseth me, as if thy blessings had spare days, but such a heart whose pulse may be thy praise. I wish you a holy day today that you may discover that heart whose pulse is God's praise. And may God bless you all.